gosh. Uh, good evening. Uh, this Town of Adams Board of Selectmen meeting, Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, is now called to order. Um, please note that tonight's meeting is being recorded and televised live on Northern Berkshire Community Television, channel 1303. And if there is anybody who um, will be recording, thank you, I Berkshires, uh, please notify the chair uh, prior to recording. Um, with all of that said, if you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, the first item of business is the approval of minutes. The board has in front of them two sets of minutes, one for March, March 6th, and the other is for March 20th, both of 2024. And what is the board's pleasure with regard to the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March 6th, 2024 and waive the reading of the minutes. Okay. I have a motion by John. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or an abstention? Sorry. That's unanimous. Okay. That was for both sets, right? Or did you just March 6th? Sorry. March 6th. Okay. So I need an action taken on March 20th. I make a motion to approve the minutes from March 20th, 2024, and waive the reading of the minutes. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or an abstention? That is unanimous. Thank you. That will bring us to public comment. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak to the Board of Selectmen this evening? Under public comment. Okay. Going once, going no. All right. Then we will move on to old business. Um, so under old business, we do have two address determinations. They are for the Greylock Glen um, property. Uh, the first one is for Greylock Glen Outdoor Center. The second one we would take up is Greylock Glen Water Tower. I believe that these were both tabled. Or did we not take action? Let me just see if they were tabled. Yeah, we did table both. I think so. And Howard was the second. That was the motion. Okay, so if you want to make a motion, if you want to put it back on the table, we're ready for these. Will do. I'll make a motion uh, to uh, put back on the table uh, the Greylock Glen Outdoor Center address determination, 165 Gold Row, Adams, Mass. And I'll second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? Okay. So in front of us, we do have a notice of assignment of street number. This is for um, map 218, parcel 5. Um, the current number had been 0 Gould Road, and the proposed number um, from the building commissioner is 165 Gould Road. Um, per the Town of Adams Charter and Code of Laws, Section 13-1, numbering of buildings, the Board of Selectmen may order numbers to be affixed to or painted on the building on any public or private way in their discretion. The owner of every house shall comply with such order within 10 days thereafter. And so we do just need to uh, make the motion and approve the uh, proposed number for the outdoor center. I'll make a motion to approve the Greylock Glen Outdoor Center address determination to 165 Gould Road, Adams, Mass. I have a motion by John. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Howard. Any discussion? Uh, yes, I just have a question. Um, as far as uh, addresses, um, how, how does that go to determine the number? Is it build up a lot would be one number? How? How does, how does this work? How did this get to be 165 Gould Road? That's a question for Mr. Garner, and I don't really know the answer to that. Anything else? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? For an abstention? 
The next item so we do have to put back on the table is the water tower address. I'd like a motion to put back on the table the Greylock Glen water tower address determination, 240 Thiel Road, Adams, Mass. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Sorry. I forgot to ask for discussion. <laughs> um, so here in front of us, um, we do have a notice of assignment of street number uh, from the building commissioner for map 218, parcel 5. This is for the water tower, um, and the current number is 0 Teal Road, it proposed 240 Teal Road. And I can read the town charter and code of laws section again, but it remained the same as the last item. I would entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the Greylock Glen Water Tower address determination, 240 Teal Road, Adams, Mass. Okay. I have a motion by John. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Howard. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or an abstention? That is unanimous. Thank you. So that takes care of old business. Um, that will bring us to new business, and item A is a presentation and selection of memorial uh, building developer. And uh, I will turn things over to our town administrator. While uh, Ms. Season and Mr. Mackin uh, come on up, I'll just lay the, uh, the stage for everybody in the context. So when a public building is disposed of in any way, uh, the town can only do that in two manners. One, either by auction which the town has no control over who purchases it. It's only by auction or price. The second way to do that is by RFP or request for proposals. Several years ago, the town uh, elected to maintain and keep the Adams Memorial Building for future use. There was a visioning session, and it was determined that the uh, classroom wing would be turned into housing, but the gymnasium, auditorium, and those sections of the building, preferably on the left-hand side, would retain for public use. The town put out an RFP for housing. We received two applications at that time. It's about three years ago, I think, at this point. Uh, Mr. Mackin was the runner-up at that time. Uh, the project was awarded to somebody else. And as with most housing projects in this day and age, particularly housing projects here in the Berkshires, that developer was unable to uh, get enough capital to execute the project that he had wanted. Therefore, uh, the town put the project back out for RFP. The town's vision has not changed, that it's still the highest and best use of the opinion of the, of the select board in the town. And, and uh, Mr. Mackin has always maintained communication with the town, always said, let me know if that doesn't happen. Uh, he responded to the RFP. Uh, Donna Season, who we may not have seen for a while, uh, Donna is still here. Uh, and this has been one of the projects that Donna's worked on for quite some time and has asked uh, me if she can continue to see it through and, and work with Mike uh, through the RFP process she has. So she's here tonight. And uh, she'll take it from here and introduce uh, Mr. Mackin to everybody. So as Jay said, um, Mr. Mackin has uh, retained um, a high level of interest in the building um, since we first offered the um, RFP in 2021. Um, this time around, uh, we issued an RFP in January. He was the only uh, proposer. Um, I think you'll find uh, Mr. Mackin not only experienced and not only capable, but enthusiastic about the building. And um, that is exciting to me um, as somebody who has, um, I mean, I, I really do feel the Memorial School building, although it has its issues, it, it, it's a treasure. And um, I think Mr. Mackin, as you'll see, is willing to work with the town. This becomes more challenging, a more challenging project, because we want to retain the community use portions of the building, the gymnasium, the auditorium, and then um, ancillary spaces around those um, space areas. So um, I think it is a challenging project, but um, the committee recommended um, wholeheartedly that um, Mr. Mackin can do the job. So I'm happy to introduce Mike Thank you very Mackin. Much. Okay. Uh, so, um, my name is Mike Mackin, I'm a general contractor and developer, and you all have a copy of the actual RFP that I submitted to the, to the town. Um, 
we've had a couple of discussions, Donna, and uh, the community development uh, director uh, regarding the proposal. And um, as you originally wanted to retain portions of the building for use, uh, I can do that if I take full ownership and lease back that portion to the town. And uh, in conversations where right now, we're looking at a base, co a base lease of 20 years to the town. Um, do any of you have any questions at all regarding the proposal that I've submitted? I'll open up to the board if anyone wants to ask Mr. Mackin any initial questions. I'll, I'll just ask an initial question. I, sure. When I was reading through this, I noticed that the majority of the building is going to be one-bedroom apartments, and there's going to be four, I believe, two-bedroom apartments. The, the original proposal, the, the pro forma that we did, um, was based on just best use of space type thing, with consideration for the town's R40 requirement. So there's a minimum uh, number of units in there so that the town meets its minimum requirements for that. Uh, we may change the, you know, the, the layout and the, the quantity of the, the units. Um, it, there seems to be a, a, a bigger demand right now for two-bedroom two units. So we're going to look into that. And as long as we can make it work financially, that's probably the way that we're going to go. Okay. Um, another question which you have brought up, the, the lease of the um, gym auditorium uh, for the community center, um, and you indicated that you would need to own the building itself and lease it back to the town. That's correct. I'd like to ask the town administrator, is that something we can do and how would that work? We would have to sit down with, with Mike and go through that and see what the liability is to the town. Uh, I can tell you that we had expressed to Mike what our capital needs are in order to finish out that space, to use it uh, for council on aging and for town meetings in the auditorium and for additional usage of the, of the gymnasium. It's really, the, as we've talked about before, it's really the bathrooms that have been an issue. Uh, we have insufficient fixtures, insufficient number of fixtures to, to do that. Uh, Mike is aware of that need. He's fully capable of, of, of being able to assist with us. If you look at his renderings as well, you'll see that he's proposed to have the entire building match, whether it's, whether it's the residential section of the building or whether it's the public use section of the, of the building. So we've had, in interviewing Mike, we've had some conversations with him about ways to make the building look uniform, ways that in return for a lease, he could assist with some capital and execution on those, those bathrooms, in addition to grant funds and, and other things that we're looking at to try to do that. I think if the town were to agree, if the board were to agree to some type of a lease arrangement, the key really is what value is it that the town is getting in order to give Mike a, a lease for X amount of years. He's explained his need uh, with financing, but um, housing, as I said, is very difficult. Mike has explained he has an excellent lender, but that lender is asking for the collateral to be secured with the ownership of the entire property. So. I think the, a vote for the board tonight would be very simply, if you like Mike's presentation, if you agree with what he's proposing to build that meets your vision for the property, meets the housing you know, uh, expectations that we're, we're looking for, then we can certainly work with Mike, try to come up with, with legal counsel with an arrangement and bring that back to the board and explain it and make sure everybody's cogent with it. It would not be what I think myself or town council would want initially, but I don't see why in our conversations why it would be that if if mike is willing to assist us with the the bathroom issues which has been the been a problem um i feel as though we can have some common ground there sounds good uh, i'll uh, hold off and let the rest of the board members ask questions any other additional questions joe no just one quick comment mike uh, i almost this when you first came with the other applicant um i was going to vote for you I wanted to let you know that. Oh, I appreciate and it. when I look at you, I like a contractor who comes in with dungarees, boots on, and this is it, guys. Yeah, I, right. I still yeah. have to go to work tomorrow because you, that. you tell me you're a doer. People that come in with two coats and ties and they're gonna, you know, do something. It's I feel a little leery when it comes to contracting because, you know, the suit isn't part of what you got to do. 
other to go for uh, financing and you know mm -hmm. make a great appearance in front of the board but um, I'm sorry I didn't vote for you the first time around but I'm happy that you felt confident enough to stay in contact with officials here in the community and um, once again I don't know much about base leases and how that works I'm not too astute at that kind of stuff but I'm glad that you're back and I think that you will do a good job and I think you'll stay consistent with your work. Thank you very much. I appreciate you're very that. welcome. Thank you. Yes, um, I have a question regarding, first of all, thank you for proposing and being prompt and, and thorough, which gives me confidence. Um, I'll so try. Okay. Could you educate us in terms of the lease, uh, the financial, because I understand there's benefits to having the private sector finance this. Oh, ab absolutely. The tax. Well, my, my end finance company, the TD Bank, the, my lender, wants complete ownership of the, of the property, not partial. And as a government, I mean, you're in the government business, you're not in the real estate business. All right, uh, I, I understand that you have a need for that space as a town, and we're trying to fulfill that need and at the same time accomplish ownership of, of the, the property. So what we did in our conversations during the interview process was kind of highlight the, what's, what are the highlights that the town needs in order to get the school open for the senior center. And the bathrooms were an issue, upgrading some of the electrical and providing some of the, the sprinkler systems. Mostly utilities is, is what the, the big concern is. So um, the way I looked at it is if, if I do the bathrooms, I have an investment in it, but I'm also gaining the equity portion of the, by, by acquiring the entire property. So whether it's, it's rents or equity, from a lending standpoint, the commercial lending, it still has value. Okay? And we accomplish what we need as a group to give the town what they need, and that's an open facility. So um, we did some renderings. I'm not sure if you had a chance to, to look at them. If I can ask just one follow-up follow question. Go ahead. In terms of capital reserves, let's say down the road the roof needs replacing or there's some major capital um, maintenance items. Sure. Um, will, will, your com will it be a, a company that's operating this or you individually or? It will be a company that's, that's operating. Okay, and, and will, there, will there be reserves? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the town will have access to the books and make sure, you know. You know. Sure. No, no problem at all. One of the things we are proposing is a solar field on the also, which will help generate some, some additional uh, income. Okay. Thank you. And I so, just yeah. have, oh, uh, you have a question? Go ahead. I do, but that's okay. Okay. Um, just uh, lastly, um, on this project, we the thing that begins to bother me we're the owners of it right as it stands now certainly and when we own something and then if we give you the okay for a lease we're owners but in the end we're still paying you and this has happened in an, another development in town which i won't mention we're going to be the owners but we're also um going to have to pay some money for something that we're going to need done on it because that's just the way the cards played out. So owning something and then becoming a leaser of something seems to be contradictory to me a little bit. Perhaps I can, I can clarify a little bit as to what, I, and Mike can jump in if he'd like. Okay. Mike intends to purchase the entire building for a price of $50,000. Fifty thousand for fifty thousand. Am I correct, Mike? Yes, sir. He intends to purchase the entire parcel known as the Adams Memorial School for fifty thousand dollars. What's that? It's it's actually only four acres of the entire parcel. Four it's acres. He will develop approximately what you see in your materials, approximately twenty something housing units. Of that number, 20% will be affordable under the 40R bylaw, mm -hmm. which is workforce housing, not Section 8, not low income, workforce affordable, consistent with 40R, which is the goals of the town. He will then invest into the building and some aspect onto the, the public side. We'll lease the, our public space 
back. Who's going to be responsible for what will have to be worked out in that lease arrangement down the road. Um, I think there could be some advantages to having a housing management, building management company, you know, present there. As you know, we have one facilities director who's also the building inspector and two custodians. Uh, we have a, a hard time maintaining our own buildings. Uh, Adams Memorial is a pretty, pretty big building to maintain. So I think there's some advantages there, but all of that can't be worked out tonight. That's why once the board says, yes, please work with Mike, we will then get down into the weeds of that. But that's the, the big context of it. So he'll, Mr. Mack will actually own the, own the building and the town will lease back the space it intends to use. Anything to add to that, Mike? If I well, no. Uh, typically, in a situation like this, when it's one one unit, um, as an owner, the owner would take responsibility for like the shared utilities, the sprinkler system, um, the envelope of the building, the um, the roof, uh, windows, and 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 things like that, uh, and then any interior space or uh, becomes the responsibility of the the lessor. And that's typically the way it's done, but there's flexibility in everything. It's, uh, and you know, it's, it's open for discussion and, and final. So the lease has not been negotiated yet? Oh, no, no, not yet. Okay. No. Not yet. It, it, was, it was a proposal, and in our uh, conversations, I have proposed an amount that the town said, well, hey, we're going to have a problem with that. You know, we can't pay that kind of money. And it's like, well, what can we do? Well, there's a series of grants, there's tax credits, and, and things like that that the town can provide, and we're going to investigate that. And, you know, that's where the, the money is going to come from, uh, finally. And, and that's it. So, so it works for you as well as it works for me. So okay. Essentially, our role this evening is to um, review your RFP, which we have done prior mm -hmm. to tonight, um, and then decide if... The board is ready for um, the, the town to accept your proposal and then authorize our town administrator to enter into negotiations with you. That's the process. There, so there is no lease. There is, there are no like. Okay. No, nothing, nothing, nothing binding this evening. Nothing binding at no, this point. All we're looking for is um, whether we accept your proposal correct. and want you to enter into negotiations with for a lease that would then come back before this board with all of those details laid out. And it's important because there's some time frames that we're concerned about. In June, there's a, um, a grant that we intend to apply for, for work on the outside of the building. And in order to apply for that, there's a lot of work that's involved that I'm gonna shoulder myself to, uh, to get the engineering done for that so that we're prepared for the town to apply for that grant. And that, of course, will, will help the, the entire project. So we're just looking for starting point. Yeah. That's all. Get started. Let's see if we can make this make this work and determine priorities and, and get moving from that point. Sure. So, Mike, um, we we've had your proposal for a few days. Um, thank you. It's thorough. Um, and you talked a little bit about what you would be doing with the classroom section of, or what you're proposing for the classroom section of the building, which was the about 25 apartments, maybe 21, one bedroom, four, mm -hmm. two bedrooms. Um, and we've talked about the community use space of the building. Um, but in your proposal, if you wanted to speak to that, because we haven't touched upon the, um, the cafeteria space and your proposal for using that as a new commercial space, new if you could space. elaborate on that. Sure. Uh, when we originally proposed three years ago, there was a major need for uh, an urgent care facility mm. in the area. And we explored that, and it's just not going to work, uh, unfortunately. So uh, we're looking at um, a restaurant type thing, um, something, a neighborhood facility, not a bar, not something that's going to be open until all hours of the morning or something, uh, a, just a place for people to eat maybe to uh, to grab some of the traffic that comes in from the, the running track, the information center, uh, across the street, yeah. that, that type of thing. Um, and that's that's where we're going with it. That's, that's the intent at this point. Thank you. And then also in your proposal, you talked about job creation. Can you um, just speak? 
a little well, bit about that. I know that the sure. details aren't there, but. Uh, no, that's that's okay. Uh, if if you look in there, okay, uh, if you go, take the time and go through the proposal, the actual numbers are there, okay? It shows the quantity of individuals that are expected to be employed during the course of construction, which is going to be years, probably three years, and then um, the uh, number of full-time positions that are included after the fact, once everything gets gets up and running. And it's it's positive. It's positive. They're probably, I think, uh, the full-time positions are between t uh, 10 and 12 individuals, full-time positions. Thank you for stating it. I figured with um, a camera and some members of the public and the media, this was your time to to showcase all of the things in your proposal that uh, maybe we haven't spoken about yet. So that's why that's why I'm asking these questions okay. to prompt some of this out of you. Take the time with that. Okay, there was a lot of time and, and energy that was spent on it. There's a construction a construction schedule in there. Yes. There's a cash flow analysis mm -hmm. that's in there, um, and it, it shows the dollars that are needed and when they're needed during the course of construction. Um, there's a construction cost estimate in there. And uh, I will be updating those for you shortly, adding on any of the uh, discussions that we had. So the, the cost of the bathrooms are not, were not included in the original. But I'll revise that information and get it to you, you know, if, if we agree to move, move forward, and you'll have that. The, um, the schedule will be revised also for that. And we agreed in our conversations to make the bathrooms a priority. That's something that we can get started on very soon. Uh, we're, we're ready to get started on it, so. Just to, I just wanted to state um, for, for those who are here in the audience who can't see what's in front of us, um, when I talk about a thorough proposal that's in front of us, um, it, it did include the price proposal, a proposal narrative, and the project design, um, financing, the condition of the property, project schedule, proposal um, for submissions, uh, proponent qualifications and experience, the project renderings, and then the construction cost estimates and the cash flow. So it, when I say it's a thorough um, proposal that's been put in front of us, I, I do mean that it's thorough. Um, so I just wanted those who are sitting here going, there hasn't been a lot of conversation no. tonight. Um, I want you to know we were given a lot of information. And the proposal that Mr. Mackin presented meets all of the criteria Correct. that was established in the town's RFP that Donna and the community development team drafted. It was almost identical to the last time around. It was updated slightly, but for the most part, the, the request didn't change much. And the way that the process works is that whoever the respondent is, in this case it was Mike, um, town staff assembled uh, myself, Mr. Garner, uh, Mr. Coughlin, and Donna, and we met. We reviewed all the materials. The materials met the threshold qualifications. Mike came in for an interview. We went through it more, and then from there, he's now in front of you tonight. We can't do anything without the board determining uh, to give us authority to, to proceed. So you're the next stop in the, uh, the process. Mike. Um, yes, sir. Because th this is the opportunity for the public to know uh, what, what's happening with this building. Um, and you're, you're probably closer to it now than anybody. Could you give us, from your professional perspective, how you, what you see the risks the risks are to the project? You know, to help manage the expectations of the public, because this is not um, um, a simple project. It's not a simple project, but you have a great building there. Uh, uh, the building has some great bones. What it needs is investment, and. If you don't choose me, choose somebody else. Do do something with it because the longer it stands dormant and not in use, it's going to start costing money instead. Right now, you know, we have an opportunity to develop it into something that the town can be proud of, and the the citizens of Adams that you know they need something like this. They'll have a facility that they can use for seniors. They'll have uh, the auditorium that they can use. Um, for anything, town meetings, voting, that, that type of thing, um, and housing is, are so seriously needed. Um, and you know, we plan on doing a lot of work on the outside as the, the rendering show. Mm -hmm. And 
just developing it will, will help the town so much right now. It, it's so susceptible for kids to get, kids are, I'm surprised nobody broke into it and vandal, vandalized the property at, at this point. If you were in any other part of the, the state, uh, say, be a, a horrifying so you're saying the sooner we get get going, the better. And yeah, do something. And and I'm I'm saying this as a as a professional. Okay, do something with the building. Don't let it sit. Whether it's with me, I hope it's with me. But if it's not, if you do something with it, make a find a way to get some money into that thing before it turns, because uh, it's going to turn into a liability on you real quick if if you don't start investing in it. Soon. You're saying the first thing you would do would be the bathrooms to get it ready for the council on aging? Yeah, because the other side of it is going to take a little bit of work. All right, okay. whatever we, we do as far as tax credit, the financing side of it, um, the development side a, agreement that we have to work out, uh, applying for tax credit, grants, that type of thing. The engineering side of it, just getting the, uh, the architects involved to start doing their legwork. There's an abatement that has to be done on it, the, um, you had the, the full um, analysis done for the abatement, and I prepared, I have someone scheduled for 10 o'clock tomorrow to come through here and give me a price on the abatement if you give me permission to. And you know, by, by doing that, we, we get the ball rolling, get started. They're the kind of things that are gonna have to be done before we start putting it back together. But you know, time is on your side. Uh, we, we get started with it now, there's a lot of things that we can do. We can uh, get the final drawings together for the, the bathrooms. The town has done a, a lot of adi uh, initial work on that. Um, most of the drawings are, are ready. If they're not shovel ready, they're really close to it. So that's the kind of thing that we could start getting scheduled, get, get moving on. And, get, and get what do you see as the most difficult part of this project? I don't see anything that's really, and there's nothing difficult about it. There really isn't. It's, you know, you've got the right people, you've got the right property, and the timing is, uh, it's a peak right now. You're, you're ready to go. We'll get started on it and, and get, the, get things in process, get the application process. We have a June application for the, the initial grant. We're already working on the, the paperwork for that. Uh, I mean, if you're not prepared, I, I, I respect that. Yeah, the same way as I respect that the last time around, you made a, a different decision than I thought. But I would encourage you to, to move forward, whether it's with me or somebody else. And my, my final question is, um, the previous developers were unable to, to get financing. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do differently that that team did not do? I don't know because I don't, I'm not privy to all of their, their finances. My best guess is they found a better deal and got, got involved with that. There's, there are a lot of opportunities out there right now for redevelopment of vacant properties in the state of Massachusetts, more so, more so now than ever before with the, the need for housing. Um, in my area, every single night I hear about the need for housing low-income housing, just housing in general. Um, and I know the situation up here isn't any better. And we're not focusing on the, the low-income housing, we're focusing on the need for workforce housing. Uh, an example is um, General Dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're actively looking for um, housing. Berkshire Medical Center is actively you know, so we have a real opportunity to develop something and bring professionals into the area, too, that are going to spend money here and maybe raise their families here or, or whatever. Thank you very much. You're welcome. John, go ahead. So you just mentioned that we have a team at General Dynamics that um, I have connections with that I provide information in regards to new housing, apartments, and things like that to this group that when we do have new hires that this information is presented to these individuals moving in from other states, other communities to work in uh, General Dynamics they're, and they're always looking for, looking for new housing. Um, so when you're ready, definitely look me up and I'll get that information. Yeah, that'll be great, yeah. I'll, 
submit it to the company, and we'll, get, we'll see what we can do there. Very excited about the, um, the bathrooms. Um, we've been working on this for about 10 years now to get that gym open for the kids, to get the auditorium open for, for the uh, town use and for the Council on Aging. It's been a, a long process. I agree we shouldn't be in the real estate business, but we, ha but we have to make good decisions based on our vision. And holding on to that building, like holding on to the Plunkett Hospital, instead of tearing it down, great things have happened there. Certainly. And we expect great things to happen here. Um, so we're very excited about that. We can finally see that vision to having the, the uh, gym open for, for the kids in this community to uh, have inside sports. And they're very excited. They, they're knocking at the door to use that gym. So we, and, and the one last thing we have left to do, the major thing, is the bathrooms. If we can work together on that and get that done, we're good. Exactly. Um, so um, just a couple uh, questions. Uh, that building, I have been told, is we we're going to make that, uh, uh, we had a school building committee at one time, and we we're going to expand that building um, until the, um, the uh, state ran out of money at one point sure. uh, for building schools, new schools, um, that there was an opportunity to go up a floor, and there was also the opportunity to um, expand um, north towards uh, Harding Ave, I believe. So is that something that you're going to take a look at? We're, we're going to take a look at it, okay? One of the major concerns was parking, yeah. okay? Right. And if you look at the, one of the renderings, what we propose to do is add, uh, increase the parking between the, the existing park in the front of the, the property and the building itself, okay? That far end of the school building, the, the basement area, is unexcavated. Okay, so we can backfill up, up a portion of that. Okay. It would be a good time, an opportunity if you want to show them some of your... Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that. I noticed all of them. Yeah, why don't you bring it so people We're watching right. the, you know, the program can get an idea, as the chairman said, of you know, some of the renditions that you're bringing in. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So the area that I'm referring to is this area here is unexcavated. There's no basement in this portion of the building at all. What we're proposing is taking the space between the existing park out front and that grassy area and creating more parking spaces in that area there because you know people have automobiles. We also intend to increase some of the parking out in the back of the building also. Uh, and then uh, we have a fountain out front, small walkway, and then out, an outside eating area outside the restaurant space. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Are there any other uh, renditions you'd like to show? Or? Sure. Go through them all, Mike. Yeah, they're all, they're yeah. all excellent. Well, I should have said that. Say that. Donna, you can, you can be Vanna White. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is outside of the building. Uh, we, we plan on, on doing any renovations to the building that portion of the building, the same as we're proposing to do to the school side of the building, which will include windows, hardscape, uh, things like that. That's all part of that uh, grant that we're looking to apply for in. Uh, in June. Thank you, Brandon. This is uh, the first one. It shows the, the new apartments here. Well, let's see what you're looking at. Let's show some of the new apartments. Yeah. I don't know what he was pointing at. Yeah. The folks behind you might be looking too. Oh, sure. <laughs> this is the ground floor. This area here is the restaurant space, the cafeteria, and the kitchen. And this is this will be used for commercial purposes. Mike, what do you propose to do with that boiler room? Boiler room. Not sure how much we're going to need it, right? If we end up using single units for, for the remainder of the building, and that uh, boiler room 
what we can turn it into some type of a gymnasium or athletic center for, for residents. But, uh, that was the thought anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think we may end up needing a portion of it. We don't, I don't know yet until we get into the engineering side of it. And again, this is the uh, second floor. And this shows the two bedroom apartments and the one bedroom apartments also. But again, that mix can change. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to end up with. Mike, while you're showing those off, can you go through, uh, just list a few of your other projects, particularly the ones here in Berkshire County? Can you work on? Yeah, sure. please. Um, we're currently working across the street at Berkshire Mills. All right, we're putting a little roof on the building over there and have done some, some interior renovations. Most recently, development-wise, um, locally, uh, cable mills over in Williamstown. I was a subcontractor over there. That was in 2015, 16, in, in that area there. From there, we went to Cameron House in Lenox. Uh, that was another renovation, a school building. I was uh, one of the subcontractors on that project. And then also the Indian Motorcycle building in Springfield, Massachusetts. We were there for uh, quite a few years. You trust any guys that come from the Pioneer Valley? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was a, a major uh, conversion of uh, a building that sat vacant for forever and is now, I mean, it's, it's a vibrant community. There's, uh, I forget how many units, maybe 80 to 120 units. It's, it's continuing also across the street now. It just keeps going and going. Um, but that's, that's uh, locally, anyway, give you something to, to look at. I like the idea of the parking out in the uh, front area towards uh, the north. We thought, you know, we're going to explore doing some things out the back also. Yep. Um, on the back of the building, <laughs> so we looked at maybe taking some of the embankment. I'm not sure what we're going to run into, right. ledge-wise or, or anything, but that would be an ideal situation to get some, clear, reclaim a lot of that space and make some more parking out the back also. Well, Mike is still showing that off. I, for context, I think it's a good reminder for everybody to know that just last year, we had six brand new market rate units open up on Park Street. Most of those leased up within a very uh, short period of time. Uh, Jones Block was a private building that had some public investment in it over the years, several years ago. Uh, that's now generating tax revenue and uh, folks with feet traffic on Park Street. 20 E Street, which is the former youth center, we went through the same process with 20 E Street. Um, the Hintons uh, were the name developer of that, and they anticipate leasing up nine market rate units sometime this fall. And they have already been in touch with General Dynamics and Berkshire Health Systems about recruiting tenants for that building. Uh, and the next project that we're now, we have working on is, is a memorial building with uh, Mike here, uh, and the uh, armory block, which is to the right of Firehouse Cafe. Uh, that's also being um, now explored for additional housing as well. That contractor was, that owner of the building was just in touch with town staff uh, last week about it. So we do have some exciting housing projects happening. It's slow going, but it is happening here. Um, so this would add to our, our housing inventory very nicely. So these are renderings of the men's and ladies rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you have them. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are based on the drawings that you already had produced from EDP. So, and these, they're, they're marked not for construction right now. But I don't think it would take that much to, to talk to them and, and get construction drawings. This is the ladies room. And this is 
That's all the pretty pictures I have for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, anyone from the board have any other questions? Mr. Um, Mackin. Yeah, yes. Um, um, we've been really heating this building for how many years now so that we could keep you know, it heated so it wouldn't deteriorate, as you mentioned. How many years have we been? Twelve. Twelve years. Twelve uh, years. And how much has that cost us? Which budget was it? Thirty. Probably twenty grand a year for twelve years. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good chunk of money. So, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And uh, one s small problem I see with the building is the embankment on the uh, western side the slope that comes down. Uh, there's been some cracking of the building. I think it's thawing and freezing and thawing. If, did you notice the large crack on the back of the building? I didn't. You know, they purposely kept me away from that. Oh, they probably didn't want me to see that. No, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, no, that, we that, take a look at uh, I think that's been an ongoing problem with heavy rains. That there needs to be some kind of swelling or something to maybe take the water that comes down off of there, especially um, it, it drifts a little bit, but it's mostly would be concerned with heavy rainfall events. Well, I, I appreciate the input, and that's, that's important because that's one of the things that this uh, June grant that we're looking to secure would take care of, would be site drainage, any of the hardscapes around there. And if we could, it would be ideally get some type of a, a drive driveway behind the building right. for urgency yeah all the way around that would that would work out good so we're going to work out uh, work on that one thing i do want to mention to you while I, it's fresh in my mind we're talking earlier about getting the gymnasiums open and everything i'm not sure has williams town williams college been in touch with you at all looking okay. yes good okay i know that they're looking for space they've rejected the space they, mm -hmm. oh okay. twice because of the bathrooms no, overhead clearance. Oh, okay. They wanted to do pole vaulting in the facility and it just didn't suit their needs. It wasn't anything from the town, it just okay. didn't suit their needs. To pass to you. I yeah, we went through about four times with, with folks from, from Williams College um, and they rejected the space. It just wouldn't work out for them. All right. But thanks for keeping an eye on it. Yeah, I knew that's, that's okay. I know, I knew that they were looking you know, yeah. because they tore the, tore the other field house down and they're actively looking for for space for something. So in the back of the gym, it appears that the wall is moving away from the building itself. And when we brought the high school back down for one year, we investigated that and we drilled and everything. And it wasn't, the wall wasn't moving um, like people thought it was. So it, okay. it might not, it's not as, like we were told as a school committee, it's not as bad as we had thought it was. So hopefully it'll work out as, as, as good for you guys. And it, how many times have you been on the property, Mike? Oh, more so. I can't. I'm very invested in the property. You probably already. <laughs> yeah, I'm so you know, talking been. to the. Yeah, yeah. There. yeah but it, uh, it's it's good. But these are the kind of things that happen when the building is is unoccupied. You know, uh, it'd be you know regular heat and cooling in a in a building. Keep it all together. Really the last thing I'll say is that the investments we made over the last ten to twelve years in that building are going to pay off. When this building is complete with your plans that you have and, and having a community center for our kids, for, for the uh, um, elderly and uh, for anyone really in our, in our town is going to be a great asset for us. And, and it's uh, make great housing, I tell you. It's going to make great housing too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I'm going to be honest with you, it's, it's hard to get us. Yeah. Oh, there's all, we're going to fit a lot of units in that space. Yeah. Bet you. But, well, uh, I think my, I mean, feel free to share that. I mean, Mike did want the entire building for housing. Uh, however, we had to explain to him that we have invested in the roof of the structure. We have invested in the, the, with the exception of the auditorium, the public use side, which is the gym, the old machine shop spaces, the hallway is all conditioned, air conditioned and heated now at rooftop units. Uh, and we have been making steady progress with drop ceilings, lighting, removing the old steam heat systems, uh, etc. So we have invested uh, in that side of the, yeah. of the building towards what John just described that. Right, right. right. In, in the investment of the, the Adams taxpayer over the last 10 years, we have received well over a million dollars in investments from grants to that building to uh, 
to solidify it. So over a million dollars for an investment every year to keep it warm is definitely a, a good move. But oh, it's, water, it's, a, it's a great vision. It's, that's, how you, that's how things happen. You can sit back and do nothing, or you can make investments, have a vision, which we did, and now it's happening. It's right in front of us, and it's going to, yeah. So I appreciate you being here and, and not giving up on us and coming back. No, I, listen, it's an, it's, a, it's an opportunity for me also, and I think together we, we can find, find a way to make it work for both of us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to see if Donna wants the last word. She was waving at me. <laughs> this is a way of, um, you know, a, a wrapping up. Um, the grant program um, that Mike mentioned is the MassWorks program and MassWorks infrastructure program. And the project, this project is perfect for that. They really like to come in and support housing development. Um, but it's all horizontal work. So the drainage, improving the parking areas, sidewalks, that type of thing. Um, it's perfect for that. So we've already discussed working on that. As he mentioned, it's a June deadline. It is very competitive. We might not get it this year, but then he's still in a better position for next year. There's also Brownfields program. So even though there won't be a formal partnership, there will be um, a lot of working together toward this common goal of redeveloping the entire building. So I have sent um, the board uh, a memo, mm -hmm. and there was a recommended board vote vote that um, I would ask you to consider. Okay. And uh, that recommended board vote uh, is for the Board of Selectmen to approve the selection of Michael Mackin of Mackin Incorporated for the disposition and redevelopment of the Memorial School Building per his proposal in response to Adams RFP number 23-003 and to authorize the town administrator and town council to act as negotiators for the town. So moved. I have a motion by John. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or an abstention? Excellent. Well, that's one hurdle between now and 10 a.m. Mother Nature has the other hurdle ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right. <laughs> So we'll move on to item B. We have in front of us a number of licensing requests. The first four licensing requests are um, for Poppy's concessions and to use. Thanks, thank Bob. you. Thank and you. the use of um, bow fields. Do we have anyone here from Poppy's concessions? Would you like to come forward? Well, and Gino. Gino. Yeah. This is Gino. While Gino is coming up, I want to remind folks. Here? Yes, please. Right at the podium, Gino. I want to remind the board the status of Bowfield. Bowfield was under operation of the Adams Agricultural Fair. They have dissolved. They have turned the property back over to the town and dissolved our lease. We have not had an opportunity to think through or vision how we want to use Bowfield going forward. However, the Adams Agricultural Fair group had already promised the facility to some groups, including Gino. So we are doing our best to accommodate those folks who have promised use of the facility by the Adams Agricultural Fairgrounds. Uh, Gino came in earlier this week, last week? Yeah, we had a meeting last week. Uh, Gino met with the Chief of Police, the Building Commissioner, the Code Enforcement Officer, myself, DPW. We had a great conversation. Uh, we ex you know, told Gino what to expect from the board tonight, what questions to expect, uh, and to make a, a presentation. You'll see that it's a, a pretty involved use, uh, but um, we enjoyed meeting with Gino. Um, we don't necessarily think there's anything that is contrary to how the grounds were used previously, but we wanted the board to hear from, from Gino so that you folks can, can make that decision at this time as we have not been able to have that conversation as to what our intentions are with the property. So. Thank you. Um, can I hand out a couple of sheets? Absolutely. Yep. Just with some details of... Uh, Thank you. Get you in Yep. We can talk about it if you want to go down the line. Or, you know, keep it. I was going to ask you to just give an overview of what the yeah. event is before we get into the specifics, because you're asking for a public entertainment license um, as well as the facility use. So if you could give us an overview of what the event and the activities would be, um, so, that would help us. So we're having a, uh, a memorial, we'll call it a memorial spring fling. Mm -hmm. uh, for a young man in Dalton that passed away last year, um, you know, kind of like in his memory. So like on the top there, you know, so 
all weekend we wanted to have some events going on. We have an amusement company that's going to um, provide some rides and games for all three days. Gino, your, your document here says April, uh, May, correct? May. May. Yeah, Memorial Day. Sorry. Yeah. It is. Yep. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yep. Your, your applications all say May. Okay. These are just your notes. So yeah, you're, yeah, you're good. Correct. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, so, uh, bands on two days mm -hmm. and a DJ on Monday, uh, food concessions, we did apply for uh, beer and wine, and then um, we're going to have crafters and uh, people with some straight sales for all three days. We'd like to um, do truck pulls and burnout, a burnout display on Saturday and Sunday in the afternoon with a uh, memorial motorcycle ride on Monday. And what we'd like to do on that is um, in the morning have a pancake breakfast for the riders between eight and nine, and then let them go out on their ride. And we figured they'd be back somewhere, you know, around noon time. And then, um, you know, the band or a DJ and entertainment, and uh, we'd be playing it. I'm kind of wrapping it up pretty early on Monday, I would think would be the, the slower day. Um, so then down there with the grounds, I, I had some notes, and if you want to just read them or if you want me to continue um, you're talking doing, about them as we're going. You're doing great. So with the grounds, I mean, we're aware that, well, first of all, we, we've been involved, we do concession work, so we've been involved with the agricultural fair, you know, since the 80s. So we're pretty familiar with the grounds and, and, and the people that have run it over the years. And uh, so being aware that it hasn't been used in some time, um, you know, we'd like to get in there a little early because we understand the town and, um, you know, might be shorthanded on kind of getting the grounds ready and groomed so we could get in there and do some mowing and trimming and prepare the pulling area, you know, like maybe the week of or week and a half before. And um, we would use the same area of the field for the truck pulls as the fair did when they had the pools and the demo derbies at the fair. You know, we'd be responsible for cleaning up of the grounds and making sure that there's no damage to the field, you know, tire ruts and stuff like that. I mean, we don't plan to do anything with vehicles outside of where that pulling area is, but, you know, the fact that with the carnival and stuff, there's heavy equipment, and it, if it's damp or wet, sometimes there's ruts, you know, we would make sure that all that is is um, taken care of and at the end that the pulling area is you know groomed and raked at the end of the event um, we understand you know the, the facilities haven't really been used as far as the, the bathrooms so we wouldn't even really ask to to use that building we would just get sandy cans mm -hmm. uh, for the three days you know so we're not taxing that that system and um, then we'll also, you know, take care of uh, the dumpster being, you know, emptied. And I, I know there's a dumpster on the grounds there now. And we would just, you know, make sure that when we're done cleaning up, that it would be, uh, they'd come and empty that dumpster. Um, so, you know, finale amusements would bring some kiddie rides and a few adult rides. Uh, we're not planning on anything too spectacular for the first year, you know. Um, truck pulls we would like to do in the afternoon, probably between one and five, and do the, with an intermission where we would do the burnout display. And we would have, uh, you know, the vehicles that are participating in the burnouts face a, a jersey barrier and, uh, and then chain them off on another one for safety. Um, we would have the band start at six, roughly 6 p.m about nine and we talked with the police chief and agreed you know, um, with him for about two to three officers at the event and uh, we would stop serving beer um, an hour before closing uh, we've not spoken to the fire chief yet but we do plan to have you know a fire truck and EMS personnel doing the truck pulls Thank you for that overview, Gino. Um, 
So I know in your facility request form, you did indicate that you would like to obtain a special um, wine and malt license to serve. That is a sep that's separate paperwork, so we haven't done that yet. So we won't have that to approve on our end this evening. So what we have in front of us is um, whether or not we're approving the use of the facility, which is Bowfield, and then um, the entertainment licenses for the Saturday, Sunday, and Monday um, programming. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to let you know, but Bree would be able to help you out with the wine and malt paperwork if you wanted okay. to continue to explore that. So although you mentioned alcohol here, we're not taking that up tonight. Okay. Next okay. meeting is April 17th. Yeah. So there would still be time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is getting close. It is. Yeah. It is. I, I just, I think our discussion was we wanted to make sure that you think yeah, we got everything we got and then we'll seek out an alcohol vendor and we'll yeah. work together to get that. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll open up to the board if they have any questions right now with the overview that you just gave before we get into the specifics of the um, paperwork in front of us. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Gino. Anyone have any questions? Uh, yeah. Sure, Joe. Hi. I don't know if you remember me. I do. You, t you were in charge of the grounds, right? Yeah. yeah. You used to mow and trim. Yeah. 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 How are you? Good to see you. I'm pretty good. How about yourself? Good, thank you. Yeah. Um, on behalf of uh, Gino and his family, I've known them for quite a long time, and uh, hardworking people, and they doing this generationally and it's almost like a mobile economic system for these people they have to travel and they have to get it to events that have enough people to make it profitable for them and i i can bet after covid it's been tough for you and business like you're doing it's it's a go-go business and you know there's not many people as yourself around anymore that does this kind of thing concessions yeah i mean it, it's sad too because yeah. the, the um, sweat equity that you and the committee have put into that fair um it's yeah you know, it was it's, sad for it to go i know a lot of people put a lot of uh, effort yeah to well, keeping it going over the years and, and people um, like yourself helped it keep going too because you were always accommodating and when we called you, you would come down, you did a good service to the community, and so I didn't get to officially thank you because things kind of just well, dissolved after COVID, but um, I'm just uh, not asking any questions. I'm just giving uh, my take on uh, Orlando's. I've known them for a long time, and uh, they certainly are people of their word, and they're hardworking people. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Just looking looking forward to the event. Looking forward to attending. Well, thank you. Exciting. I like uh, one of your responses where it will be loud. <laughs> that, that, that'll get me down there. But I will, I will bring your attention to the facility use request oh. that is until 9 p.m. It will be loud until 9 p.m. Uh, one of the other things that I did forget to put in, into this and I spoke with the building inspector, it was to touch base with a couple of the neighbors yeah. um, that are like really about on that backside there and um, have a conversation with them. Yep. As we said, uh, Gino was, was great to work with. We had a great conversation. All town staff didn't have any, you know, at first we had concerns. Well, the, you know, but at the end of the day, that's really what the grounds were, were for. Gino's been there before. He's familiar with it. He understood any of our concerns that we had so um, we're glad to have you back here in Adams and we hope this is a good partnership going forward Gina you know thank you and um, you know moving forward it's getting close like we just mentioned if and we'd like to get um, uh, the community involved so if there's anybody you know that would like to display you know whether it's a nonprofit or or anything like that um, we'd love to hear from them just to get as many people involved as we can yeah, one thing I'd also like uh, to mention to you is up on the top where the land, we didn't own it, but we kept it for extra parking. I don't think that's doable right now because uh, I don't know if you've been down Is that there. out by the ICE company? Yeah, no, no. On the old Columbia Street coming into the entrance, uh, the upper tier uh, parking yeah, lot, yeah. the overflow. Um, 
I don't think that's doable right now. No one's been there. There's a lot of trees going yeah. over because sentimental. I go by there quite a bit, and yeah. it brings back a lot of fond memories. But I'm just. And we, we, when I was talking with the chief, he asked me about, um, you know, people, what we thought for attendance, you know. Yeah. And people call us all the time to come to their events, and I'll ask them what they're expecting, you know, and they'll say, you know, 20,000 people. 15,000, which means, you know, maybe 2,000. Yeah, right. So my thing was in three days, if, you know, if we could get 1,500 to 2,000 people, that would be, a, you know, a good start. Yeah. All right. Well, before we can start promoting and asking groups to be there, we do need to um, review the facility use request that is in front of us. Um, so Gino has put forward an application to use um, Bowfield for Poppy's concessions to hold a Memorial Spring Fling on Saturday, May 25th, Sunday, May 26th, and Sunday, or I'm sorry, I said Sunday twice, and Monday, May 27th, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. for a carnival uh, type event with truck pulls and bands and a DJ. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Uh, I'd like to um, move forward with that request. Um, so you'll make the motion um, to use uh, Bowfield for those three days for the spring fling. Okay. Uh, so I have a motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by John. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or an abstention? Excellent. So we've approved the facility use. We'll move on to um, the entertainment licenses, and we do have to take them one at a time. So sorry for the cumbersome nature of this, uh, but there's a Sunday entertainment license in the mix, which is handled separately. Correct. <laughs> so uh, we have a public entertainment license um, for Poppy's concessions for Saturday, May 25th, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. I'll move that motion. I have a motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Or an abstention? That is unanimous. The next is the Sunday Entertainment License for Poppy's Concessions for Sunday, May 26th, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. I'll move that motion. A motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by John. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Or an abstention? That is unanimous. And the last entertainment license in front of us for this event is for Poppy's Concessions uh, for Monday, May 27th, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. I will also move that motion. Motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I just want to thank you for saying that you would reach out to the neighbors about the entertainment that you plan to have so that they are aware ahead of time. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For bringing that forward. Um, if there's nothing else, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstention? That is unanimous. All right. All set. Uh, you are all set. You need you. to get your work with Bree to get your uh, mall. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Your uh, mall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pat Wheeler. Yeah. That was sad. She had Alzheimer's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gino, thank you so much. Thank you. Bree or Stephanie from the DPW office will get together with you. We'll get you access. I'll get a DPW supervisor get you. We'll talk about oh, mowing and okay. cleaning. I just had one um, um, last question. Sure. Um, um, is there going? Is he have to pay the town for use of the field? No, because okay. we haven't established okay. a few things that I forgot to, to write. We did talk about okay. donation Good. to the town yep. at the end. That would be uh, kind of you. So once once we wrap everything up and we get the beer and wine and we're ready to go, I'll submit something to at least a minimum. Okay. One of the other reasons why we're able to do this with Gino is because we explained to him that Parks and Grounds leading up to Memorial Day spends a lot of time in our two cemeteries. <laughs> on um, the ball fields and that we haven't had the labor associated with both field in quite some time and Gino was adamant get me a key I'll get in there I will help out so we'll be able to we have some people that are willing to help us um, try to get the ground I'm old now I from Dalton that you know <laughs> we're involved with 
We'll get you going. All right. Thanks, thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Um, so we have two uh, applications in front of us still under item B, licensing requests. For the Adams Street Fair, I do see Leanne is here, so I'll see if she can come forward. I see that. <laughs> Your partner in crime is not here. Not. All right. Um, so, Leanne, I'll stop talking. You can tell us a little bit about what you got planned for this year. Um, this year's program will be um, the fair is scheduled for the 14th of July, and this year, because of the lovely weather we had last year, <laughs> we have a rain date of the 21st. Mm -hmm. um, we're asking for the parking lot again at the visitor center. Um, everything will be the same as last year. We're planning the parade um, from Memorial School to um, the parking lot behind the bank. Um, the same same times as last year. Nothing nothing has changed. Okay. Same street closures. Which you worked with the police department. Mm -hmm. Joe is going boards. to meet with Chief Kelly next, or talk with K Chief Kelly next week. Okay. About the road closures. So, yeah, so it's a Sunday, July 14th, um, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. for the visitor center with a rain date of July 21st, the same hours. Um, requested use in addition to the visitor center is uh, the, the following streets for the parade. Um, which is uh, Music Street, Mill Street, Columbia, Depot, Spring, Pleasant, and East Maple. Um, I don't know so much about Mill Street. Did he okay. put that in there? He wrote from Mill Street down to Columbia Street. Oh, oh from, so maybe uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. From on Husek, yeah, yeah, yep. from Mill Street to yeah. Yep. Okay. I was trying to follow the. Yep. <laughs> the chief rule. The chief will hone in on that. Yep. Yeah. As long as you folks authorize the overarching yep. approval. I like to state it publicly when I can. Um, okay. Um, well, I'd like to make a motion to review and approve the facility use request for the Adam Street Fair Committee uh, with the caveats of road closures, which will be worked out with the police chief of Mill Streets to Columbia Street, Depot Street from Spring Street to East Maple Street, East Maple Street, Pleasant Street for July 14th from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, with the possibility of rain. There will be a rain date, which will be the following Sunday, which would be Sunday, July 21st, uh, with the same hours from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. I have a motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Howard. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment. This, I like when these things come in front of us because we have groups pro add-ons and your group and to see, uh, well, he's, something being done with the fair. I think nothing is better for community spirit, spirit than these type of gatherings. It's so much fun yeah. to see the people come out. Yeah. And especially that first year, it was the first time people gathered since COVID. And right. everybody just, Joe and I just stood there in awe. And, and, and every year we just stand there and smile and, and we're thankful for the community support, for the town support. And it, it's been a lot of fun. And this past year we were able to donate $2,000 for each of our first responders, which made us feel really good. Plus, your, your event is free, and yep. you know because of the dynamics of our town, it's, yeah. it's important that people are able to get out and go around for something that's free other than what they may purchase. We absolutely want to keep it free. We've had great sponsorship from a lot of the businesses in the areas um, who have helped us pay for our entertainment, which is not cheap. <laughs> um, and so that's, it, that's been great. And the people who want, we, we've been getting emails for months. I want to vend, I want, I want to set up a ton. So um, every year, you know, Joe would take over the whole town if he could. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be happy to give it to him. 
yeah, you might. <laughs> so yeah, you know, he's 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 got big ideas for other things, as you guys know. But we'll see where that goes. Um, but you know, he's he's all in. You know, he just had a very devastating loss in his family, so yeah. um, he's dealing with that. But he's still got he's still all all about the fair. So thank you, thank you. Did we? Vote, or are we still in discussion? Still just in question, discussion. Just a Sorry. quick question. Um, you indicate for hours of use, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., but what will, what will be the actual time of this? So um, I think we started at noon last year. Uh, the parade is like at 11.30, 11.45, because it's a very short route. And then we do open, opening ceremonies at, um, at noon. And then it runs, I'm not sure if he has until four, uh, uh, five or six o'clock p.m. I mean, the first year we were like seven, 7.30, and people, we were still cleaning up in the dark, and I told him that's just too late. Um, so yeah, it's about it's about a five, six hour day. Okay, thank you. And my husband makes sure that the, <laughs> the uh, visitor center is nice and clean before we go, so. Which we appreciate, yep. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Or an abstention? That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I would just um, recommend, uh, I don't think they have a Sunday <laughs> entertainment license. So I think we need to do that okay. paperwork mm -hmm. for our next meeting. Okay. Yep, that's okay. Um, and then that would take care of the event side of things. And then the next application um, that Joe put Do in front of us is a... Uh, the application place signs on a public way to promote um, the street fair uh, using town hall lawn, the visitor center lawn, and the library. And lawn. may I also suggest, I don't have to, but also suggest Memorial Park East West. Sure. That's not on here, but that's a nice spot. Okay. Put signs up. Okay. Which most people usually do. Okay. Well, I'll make the motion to allow and review and approve the application for the Adam Street Fair Committee to place signs on the following public ways in the town of Adams for their street fair, those being Town Hall Lawn, Visitor Center Lawn, and Library Lawn. And um, if you get permission, as uh, Jay just mentioned, those might be two good places, right? on each side so when mm -hmm. people are going there it's a long straight away and they get a chance to look at them. Yes, thank you for this and uh, one other thing I have um, is sign dimensions um, like you know we, we should I think we did have go over that at one time because if you give somebody permission for a sign and you don't know how big it is and they go down they put a yeah. you know a big sign but so I don't know what yeah, the standard the, sign what's yeah the signs that we've been putting up yeah, are not usually big. about the same yeah. as like the Long candidates yes yeah, yeah. Right. yeah yeah then there's the big one he puts at um racing mart right but yeah. that's on yeah. private property right. so right yeah so. and at an upcoming meeting we'll have a more standardized application this application which we talked about at our last meeting updating this form with the uh, locations for people to check off and then you can add in the add in back the um size dimensions um but this was already submitted by okay. the time we did have that conversation two weeks ago <laughs> did you submit the paperwork for the circus yeah okay all right i will bring that up so that'll be coming up again so joe has made a motion um for town hall lawn visitor center lawn library lawn and i think you said memorial park east and west joe as part of your motion um if if they so want them there okay. that was just a uh, suggestion yeah. yep please yeah, add it to the motion good okay yeah. So uh, Ben Ad. So uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Well, just thank you again for continuing thank on. Thank you for your difference. support. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Great. Well, I know we're all happy to support you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have all in night. favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstention? That's unanimous. Thanks, Leanne. Thank you. Please send our best to Joe. Thank you. All right. Um, item C, uh, interview housing authority board candidates. Um, so as the board may remember, back in 2021, there were changes uh, 
made uh, regarding the um, Housing Authority Board. Um, here is a uh, chapter 358 of the Acts of 2020. Um, and so the board was given all of that information from the Department of Housing and Community Development. And in addition to that, um, the, the board was also provided the notice of uh, these, this position being open by Mr. Schrade. Did you want to come forward? Okay. Um, to talk about where this was posted, how it was talked about with the tenants, and then I know we have, I believe, two candidates this That's evening correct. and not three, because um, we did get notification today that one has... Yeah, I'll go over that, sure. Okay, so if you want to talk about that. Um, so my name is William Schrade. I'm the Executive Director for the Adams Housing Authority. So the Act is, what it does is it allows, it, it, it appoints one tenant to be a board member of the five-member board. The, currently the board has um, three elected officials, one tenant, and one state appointee. Um, so uh, this had already gone through, started in 2020. Um, the uh, current board member has chosen not to be reappointed. Uh, regardless, you still have to go through the process. So what the process is, is the, um, the letter and the, uh, the form in the back um, was hand-delivered to all the elderly residents since we're right there. Um, the other ones were mailed out to the family units, um, a total of 82. Um, everyone had an opportunity if they had a question they could come in. Um, they could ask of what their role would be, which essentially the role is the three, I call them the three bullet points is that they are, they approve policy, budget, and they hire and fire the executive director. I think more hire than fire. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Weiss, my uh, board chairperson is, uh, is here. Um, we invited during the process anyone who signed up um, at that point three three um, people did to come to our march meeting which happened to be our annual plan um, at that point i had contacted um, the, uh, the chairperson to say how we'd like to move forward with this which thank you very much um, at that at the end of um, april i'm working with the town clerk and and i really want to put a shout out and a thank you to the town clerk um, she she worked with us on this to make sure it was a smooth transition. And when I say smooth, it was smooth. So um, I really can't thank you to the town clerk for that. Um, three people had submitted their names. Um, one of the people, Mr. Hyman, had chosen um, to withdraw his candidacy. He did that this morning. So there are two candidates, um, Mr. Suttle and Mr. Jacobson. Both of them are residents of the Adams Housing Authority. Um, I am just here just to introduce them, and if there's any questions to have um, going from there. Um, the great thing about this is that the Board of Commissioners and the Executive Director have no uh, have no input and no say in the matter. I have not <laughs> contacted anyone. I know the Board Chair hasn't either. This is a decision um, uh, for you guys to make. So before I introduce them, just one last thing. We, it's funny that we talk about housing tonight. Mm. Um, I am excited to announce that um, Secretary Augustus, the Secretary for the, it's no longer DACD, it's the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, will be at the Adams Housing Authority on May 15th. Everyone will receive an invitation. Uh, Jay's agreed that he will allow me to attack him on the things that I need to get from first before he um, tackles him on the issue. We're going to tag team him. We're going to tag team him. Okay. Um, but I just want to at least make that quick announcement that um, I think this is the time, this is the first time in 30, 30 years there's been a, a cabinet level secretary for housing. What makes it even more exciting is there, uh, that he has agreed to come to Adams mm -hmm. um, to, with our housing authority and anything else that the town has. So that's so exciting. But that's great. here tonight is to introduce Mr. Sato and Mr. Jacobson. They both live at our Columbia Valley development uh, for Columbia Street. Again, they are both um, they are both residents of the Adams Housing Authority, so they do qualify for that. Um, I'm going to stay. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy. So I just, just Thanks. for timing purposes, I just wanted to show to also state. So they had to submit their paperwork to the town clerk by April 1st. They had 30 days. They had 30 days from the notice that was given. That's correct. Um, and it was until the close of business on April 1st. Um, hence why you and I talked about we would because there were multiple applicants for the one seat that they would come forward for an interview tonight. And then the board would then have time 
to review and think about it, and then we would make a decision at our April 17th meeting. Correct, because the 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 um, the board position, the um, the current board member, um, her term expires May 5th. Right. I have a meeting on May 23rd, whatever, and I'd really like to try to keep a full board. Um, it really helps out. Yep. Um, so from there. Um, Joe, I just had a question. Who is your state appointed? Um, Linda, uh, Linda Zarnick from, she's the solid, solid waste mm -hmm. um, okay, person. Linda she's she's our, mm -hmm. yeah, um, Ann Bartlett, uh, Kelly Rice, and Carol Roberts are on my board and their stag, their appointments, are, their election are staggered out um, through there. And I'd have to look at when Linda's uh, appointment ends. Yeah. But typically it just keeps on carrying over and all that. So there's not a yeah, I'm glad that um, somebody from the state's coming out that Augustus, he did a really good job for the city of Worcester. Yep. And um, he was well liked, and I think you can get something done with him. I hope so. Yep. I'm not afraid to beg for money. Everyone knows that. Jay knows that too, but that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's, what, that's what's going on, so I'll okay. keep everyone updated on that. But on that note, um, they are here to answer any questions that you might have. Great. So if it's okay, we'll start in alphabetical order because it's the fairest way in my opinion um, and it's how my brain works is in alphabetical order um, so with that said that would be uh, George Jacobson if you want to come forward and if you wanted to um, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving okay, um, I'm just a recent uh, member of this, of this town I just moved here less than a year ago uh, May 25th will be one year. I've been a resident at Mount Columbia Valley, and it's, I love the place. It's very good, very quiet, which is what I prefer. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a uh, Navy veteran. Uh, like most of my family, are, I've been uh, military service. And you know, I've really been in this community as, as your town, and it's well to do something. I want to do something to uh, get back. You know, I really, like I said, a little bit of a short time. So um, I'm slowly moving my way around. Yeah, but um, most of it is, you know, pretty, pretty cut and dry. It's easy to find in certain places. Uh, I don't know what questions you have for me, but. Sure. I'll open it up to the board. Um, if anyone has any questions? Um, well, I didn't have much time to think on this because uh, mm -hmm. I didn't understand what we're going to do, but I'll ask the same question to both of you because that's only fair. Yes, sir. Okay. You mentioned that you wanted to get involved with the community. Yes, sir. Um, in the past, have you done any community work for other uh, communities you lived in and put yourself forward as a volunteer or anything like that? No, 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 sir. Okay. Actually, um, I, I take that back. Uh, during the height of COVID, a security company I worked for in the, the town of Plymouth uh, had, had myself and a few others uh, appointed as COVID ambassadors, which mm -hmm. entailed driving around, make sure people had masks and, uh, you know, if we're, if we're, if we're when COVID was really on its height, yeah. once the governor dropped a few uh, standards and uh, that cut that down. But um, I, did, I did do that as part of my uh, security job. Yeah. Well, very good. I wish I could have come up with uh, better questions, but that was just oh, off the top top of my head, and um, I'm only going to ask one question. Okay. John. Yeah, I'll do the same thing. Um, you've only been here a short time, and, and I understand that your responsibilities will be similar to what we have: budget, pro uh, policy, things like that. But as, um, since you've been here, can you uh, uh, discuss a, something positive about the time you have spent? In your first year over at the uh, um, you're building your apartments where you live? Uh, uh, this is um, uh, uh, very uh, eager to get me in there because 
I had um, a situation where I left uh, the Plymouth area and I was just in a mess. I spent some time with one of my sisters in Virginia just to yeah, I get myself together. Then I came back up here. I was living with an old sister in Lennox for about two months. And within that time, we put applications into all the housing areas. And Adam's housing came, reached out to us right away. And it, not only myself, but my sister was amazed that we got a, a response so quick. We were uh, expecting that. and. And we moved on just, just fine, got it, got in, and uh, well, you know, it's, it's been. Uh, I like, I like, I like my quiet. So I have a nice quiet area, and uh, it's just a great place to live. I'd recommend it to anybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, is there any one thing that you would like to see changed regarding housing in Athens? Uh, I'd probably, you know, uh, well, uh, whether Johnny Owens, it's a, a more, you know, more, more of it, but um, as in regards to Columbia Valley, nothing if it changes more than the fact that I can see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, thank you for coming forward. Thank you for raising your hand and saying that you wanted to get involved um, in your community. And, and welcome to, to Adams. Thank you. Uh, just ahead of your first anniversary here. So thank you. Thank you. All right. And then that will give us uh, our next candidate, uh, Mr. James Suttle. And I'm going to ask you to do the same, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, why you were looking to get involved. Um, I came here in, with my wife in April of 2020. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and <So> um, <laughs> to answer, Joe, I'm not a guy that has ever been involved with community things or put myself out there. And when this um, letter was slipped under my door because I'm an elderly person in the Adams Housing Authority. And normally, these type of things, I would just trash them and go on about my business. And then as I perused it, I realized, yeah. I said, you know why? Because this guy excites me. <clears throat> And he is so enthusiastic about the facility that if there's anything that I could do to support and contribute to helping him with his vision, because he's, he's a guy that's proactive and gets things done. And I appreciate you know, the painting, the remodeling, constantly looking for things. And also, I see how caring he is to the people when I over I hear him talking to someone or seeing he he's such a kind guy and he just gets things done and I'd like to work with a guy like that. And so that's why and I can't remember all the things that I've done, but I, I wrote them I wrote them out. <clears throat> I started out as a construction worker out of high school with a local labor union. <clears throat> and then after that went bad, after the beer swamp job. Um, I, I did maintenance work, uh, cleaning and cleaning banks and things like that. And then I got a job at Schaefer Eaton Textron. And that was, I spent, uh, that was 1981 to 88. You're smiling at Schaefer Eaton yeah, Textron? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I was in the shipping and receiving for four and a half years. And I ended up in quality control as they were closing. People didn't want to stay in quality control, and I wanted to keep working as long as I could, so I went into quality control for six months and then got laid off there. I went from there to Unistress, where I worked 20 years. I used, when I went to the union, after I got laid off from Schaefer Eaton, uh, I went to the union hall, and Pat Mellon was BA at that time, and he says, why don't you go up to Unistress? He says, they're looking for people your age. 
He says, no one wants to work, and that was 1988. Okay, so went up there, and I got hired in uh, quality control up there. I did 12 years as an inspector in quality control, um, ensure that products were in compliance with blueprints before casting, and ensure that finished products meet specifications. Uh, then I, I had a problem in my back. I had a sciatic nerve attack, and I had to go out and have surgery. So when I came back, they were reluctant to put me back in the physical aspect of quality control because there was testing of concrete was involved and things like that. So the vice president left me in the union and asked me if I would take on special projects for him. One uh, of I became a Six Sigma Green Belt. Has anyone ever heard of that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I may be one. Pardon me? I may be one. You are? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, also, I oversaw facility units, domain projects. Does the domain bring the bell? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the, that's the process. Define the problem, measure it to see if it really is the problem, analyze it, implement it, and the hardest part, control it. So, I, along with doing that, then we got into workforce training grant, and that was had to do with manufacturing. So I was involved with the new manufacturing as they developed that on the plant floor. And I was hired, all this is going on at the same time. Uh, job hiring for operations, uh, interviewing, orientation, record keeping, issuing weekly manpower reports, develop, implement, and oversee training program for labor force. Four years doing that. Write training content and tests. We, we, had, we started training people coming in because we needed bodies and some people were coming through the door couldn't read a tape measure. So, you know, we really, you know, if they had manual dexterity, that was good. But, but then we could start teaching them how to read blueprints uh, and read a tape. <laughs> Ensure that instructor following training procedures, maintain training records, and ensure follow-up. Um, I worked with Word and Excel during all that time. I had to use that on, on all the work I did. And I didn't, when I got there, I didn't know how to turn the computer on. <laughs> and the other experience was while I was there, they sent me to numerous leadership courses at the Employee Association of the Northeast and all around. And now I'm here and I'm meeting a guy who is enth as enthusiastic and productive as the boss I had at your stress, and I'd like to help him out. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you've asked, you answered my question right off when you said, <laughs> yeah. you've got an extensive resume. Thank you for putting your name forward. Okay. John? It's the same here. You've uh, mentioned the positive things going on over there, so I'll go too. Thank you. Um, is there any one thing that you would like to change with regard to housing and Adam? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I will explain my smile about Schaefer and I worked for Well, yeah, excuse me, there is. Oh. When, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When he does the... Ms. Rice, is there something? Yeah, <laughs> Okay. Next she year, him, so. when he does the, the Thanksgiving dinners, he provided Thanksgiving dinners for all of us. Yeah. You know? And I was wondering if it could be surf and turf. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of turkey? All no, right. It's been a result of you coming back to beg for money that we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but no, so I, I worked for somebody who had worked at Schaefer Eaton, and when you mentioned the name, it um, brought fond memories back. So okay. Yeah, of those conversations. And there was a lot of really nice people there. Yeah. Uh, it was a uh, paper, and uh, yeah. Um, okay, I think that's it. I just wanted to thank you as well for stepping forward and raising your hand and saying I want to get involved. And um, 
And I also wanted to just uh, point out, and if I can uh, embarrass Bill a little bit, um, so you have two candidates who came forward, maybe you coached them, um, but they both said very kind things about you and the work that you're doing over at the Adams Housing Authority, and I would echo what they are saying. Um, and I, I think that that's why we have multiple candidates coming forward. So it's been very nice hearing from both James and George uh, this evening. Thank you. I appreciate that. Welcome. Um, I do have one thing. Please come forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Suttle. No, I did not coach them. I promise I'm you that. Just, I know you're not. I'm um, teasing. I just wanted to see how red the face was. Oh, yeah, you got it right. Well, okay. thank you. Well, I'm sure my board chair, too, you know, it's over there. But one thing I'm sure I, you didn't offer him a burnt hamburger. No. I was waiting for you to come for the picnic that huh. I was supposed to come to. Um, one of the things I just want to let the board know that there is some training that um, they will have to do. There's a requirement besides the um, the ethics that we all do as public officials that there's a training that they'll actually go through that will, um, it's an online training, what their role is, um, you know, how they read budgets and stuff like that. So there, besides um, some education on, you know, my part of what it is, um, they'll actually have to do something in it and it's part of being a board member that they are required to do um, to be on the board. Uh, the second thing too is uh, like I've, um, I've mentioned to the board and to all the candidates, obviously whoever you pick in April uh, will come into my office and they'll get some um, training on my end too of what they're looking for. So just want to let the board know someone's not just coming in as a, you know, uh, you know, throw them at the wolves. So I, you know, we all enjoy that sometimes when it happens to us for the first time, but um, so that they can make good sound decisions whatsoever. Um, about it and just let you know it is a I, I always have to make it clear because housing authority boards always have this issue that it is a it's a board member even though they're the tenant so they're not like the part of the tenant you know like for the tenants rights or whatever it is that their seat is a board so um, tenants still have to follow by the guidelines uh, and uh, the protocol of coming to the executive director before they come before the board just because he's a tenant um, member it's just you still have to follow by the same um, I guess the rules and guidelines of, of how things are and i will be back on the 17th least to, you know <laughs> just if you have any other questions before then if if you have one before you can always get in touch with me thank you any questions for bill no thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you all right Item D, under new business, is the appointment of temporary town clerk. Um, in our packets of information, we do have a memo from um, town clerk, Haley Mezor, um, as she is making her way up here. Haley, I might ask you to read the memo if you're okay with that. Yep, I am. Okay, thanks. Um, as you are aware, Mass General Law Chapter 268A, Section 19, prohibits a municipal employee from participating as such in a particular manner um, in which to his or her knowledge he or she has a financial interest therefore under the provisions of mass general law chapter 41 section 14 it is necessary for the board of selectmen to appoint a temporary town clerk to perform the duties of the town clerk for the election to be held on monday may 6th said temporary town clerk shall be sworn in by the chairperson of the board of selectmen prior to may 6th um, this is similar situation which has occurred in past elections when the town clerk was up for re-election. It's customary to appoint the chairman of the board of registers to serve as temporary town clerk. For that reason, it would be acceptable to appoint Timothy F. Riley as temporary town clerk for the upcoming election day. I, I do want to make it very clear that this is an appointment of a temporary town clerk. I think in years past, People have seen um, that we were uh, appointing a town clerk and they thought that you were leaving. You are not leaving. You are just on the ballot on May 6th. Correct. I just want to be very clear for everyone paying attention tonight. <laughs> I was just curious, uh, through the chair, when we appoint Tim, when that goes on, are you able to go in a building and be seen, you know? No. Yeah, right. Okay. Just wanted to That would be it. me camping. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I am close by in case there is an issue and right. he needs a little bit yeah. of guidance, but that's in view of everybody that's there. Okay. Well, if it's okay with the board, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Timothy Riley, uh, as was just mentioned, as a temporary town clerk for the upcoming 
town election, which is? Monday, May 6th. Monday, May 6th. Okay. I have a motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Howard. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? One abstention. That is unanimous. Thank you. So we'll be in touch with uh, Tim. Yes. And then item E, E and F are both yours. Yep, signing of the town election warrant. Um, this is to set the town election warrant. Um, voting will be at the Adams Memorial Building at 30 Columbia Street on Monday, May 6th, 2024 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, on the ballot is one moderator for a term of one year, one town clerk for a term of three years, two selectmen for a term of three years, one assessor for a term of three years, one board of health member for a term of three years, two library trustees for a term of three years, three park commissioners for a term of three years, one planning board member for a term of five years, one cemetery commissioner for a term of three years, one redevelopment authority member for a term of five years, one Northern Berkshire Regional Vocational School District Committee member for a term of three years, one Hoosick Valley Regional School District Committee member at his representative for a term of three years, and one Hoosick Valley Regional School District Committee member for Cheshire representative for a term of three years. I'm going to be staying this in my sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have various precinct members um, up for re-election. There's 10 for town meeting members in precinct one, 10 in precinct two, 10 in precinct three, along with a one town, one town meeting member for a term of two years in precinct three, 10 town meeting members in precinct four, four town meeting members in precinct four for two years, and one member for a term of one year, and precinct five, 10 town meeting members for a term of three years, and one town meeting member for a term of one year. So I'm asking the board tonight to sign the town meeting warrant um, so that we can get it posted in proper time for our election on Monday, May 6th. Do I have a motion to approve the um, town election warrant as presented by the town clerk? So moved. Second? Or Second. Any discussion? Yeah, just the one quick question, Haley. Um, all the uh, elected officials, do, do we have seats for all of them, for all of the, uh, are there any seats that are going to remain open that we didn't get enough candidates for any of the uh, uh, positions? Um, I'm going to run through that as soon as okay. you guys approve the warrant. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Or an abstention? That is unanimous. So, Haley, if you wanted to talk about the May 6th town election. Yep, I just wanted to give a little brief update on the town election warrant. Um, I mean, on the town election ballot. Um, so, they, we do have positions for all of the... Um, all of the positions, except for um, Board of Health member, there is an empty seat for that. It, it will appear vacant. There will be write-in spots for that. Um, but for a moderator, I'll just run through it quickly. I feel like I've been saying this all day as I've been proofing the ballot. <laughs> Um, for the moderator, um, Myra Wilk is running um, as a candidate for re-election. Um, myself, I am running for a candidate for re-election. And we have two selectmen on the two positions on the ballot for selectmen for three years. We have John Dubar running for a candidate for re-election, and then we also have Ann Bartlett, um, Jerome um, Sokoloff, Donald Sommer, and Mitch Wisnowski. Um, our town assessor is up for re-election, and she has put in her papers. Paula Wheeler, board of health member, is vacant at the moment. There is a write-in spot for that. Um, the two t library trustees that are up for re-election are James Lowman and Eugene Michalinko. Our three, there are three park commissioners up for re-election. Two of them are up for re-election, Mary Chuck and James Fassel, and Mitch Wisnowski has put his name in. Um, also, one planning board member, we have Michael Mack, who is a candidate for re-election, and we have an, um, a contested race there, Timothy Wayne Ketchell. Um, one cemetery commissioner, Bruce Dale Shapley. Um, vacant seat for the redevelopment authority member, um, Bruce Dale Shapley for the Northern Berkshire Regional Vocational School District, which is McCann's. He is a, a candidate for re-election. And we have two people vying for one seat for the Hoosick Valley Regional School District um, member for the Adams Representative, and it would be Frederick Laura and Jennifer Solak. 
And then the Cheshire representative for the Hoosick Valley Regional School District is Robert Tetlow. Um, we have various seats for town meeting members that um, they're not a full slate. We don't have a full slate in precinct one. We have two open seats. Um, you can always write in anyways, but there are two open, you know, that are on the ballot. We have one in precinct two for a three-year term. We have one in precinct three for a three-year term and one for a two-year term. Precinct four. We have um, two vacant seats for a three-year term, two vacant seats for two-year term, and one vacant seat for a one-year term, and precinct five, one um, vacant seat for a one-year term. Um, all this information will be available on the town website as soon as I get my ballots, you know, in, <laughs> um, and the specimen ballots. So they'll be posted here at town hall, they'll be posted at the library, they'll be posted at the Council on Aging, and they'll be also posted up on the website. So if anybody has any questions and they want to um, review the ballot before they come to vote um, on May 6th, um, they will have plenty of time. If you're having a difficult time finding it, do feel free to just reach out to the office and we can point you in the right direction. Um, I do want to let everybody know that um, if you did happen to get a card in the mail in January and you filled it out and you checked all elections for um, all that years, all this year's elections, um, you will be receiving a a vote by mail ballot in the mail. As soon as the ballots come in, staff will work very, very hard to get them right out to you, so you will be receiving those. We have about, I want to say 978 that we have to mail out. So it will take us some time. If your neighbor or your family member gets their ballot before you do, just know that we typically start with precinct one and work our way to precinct five. So it will be in the mail, but if you are concerned, do feel free to reach out to us. Um, vote by mail applications, if you do still want, you wish you want to do that, you can find the application on the town website, and you do need to have to get that application in for, for us by um, April 26th, I believe it is, five days before the election. Um, April 30th, sorry, I'm on the wrong calendar. And you can always request an absentee ballot too. You can request those right up until May 5th at noon. There will be no um, in-person early voting. We won't have designated times for that, but do know that you can always come in and stop into the office and vote absentee. And again, if anybody has any questions about this election, please feel free to reach out the, to the office and we'll try to answer all your questions. Did I answer your question, Mr. Novak? Yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions from the board? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, now, with town meeting members, if we don't fill all those positions, uh, a quorum goes by the number of positions that have been filled. Well, we have correct? a quorum of 85. Okay, quorum of 85, yes. okay. So that's uh, meaning that if all of the uh, positions were filled, it would be a quorum, would right. be 85? Right, if we have a full slate, we would have 150. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any additional questions? Mm -mm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item G under new business is to set the town meeting date. Um, we are in the process of uh, working through the fiscal 25 uh, budget and the workshops um, with the finance committee began last evening. Um, and we are in line for a Monday, June 3rd uh, town meeting. It's a little earlier than um, we have done in the past. We've been trying to get it earlier and earlier in June. Um, and so what I am asking the board this evening is to set the town meeting date for Monday, June 3rd. And uh, what time would it be? Uh, it has been 6 p.m. in previous years. So, so that will be? Okay, um, for item G, I'll make a motion to set the town meeting date being Monday, June 3rd, 2024 at 6 o'clock, and where will you be having it? I believe we're looking to have it at Memorial. At Memorial? Mm-hmm. Okay, and with the location being uh, Memorial School on Columbia Street. Okay. I have a motion by Joe. Do I have a second? Second. 
Second by Howard. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That is unanimous. As we set the town meeting date, um, I am asking the board to officially open the town meeting warrant. This, um, this stage in the process allows for any citizens' petitions to come forward, um, and it would be uh, opening the town meeting warrant, and then on um, April 17th at our next meeting, we would then be closing the town meeting warrant, allowing us time to get the materials ready for the um, annual town meeting warrant to be uh, finalized and presented to us at our May 1st meeting. But the first step in this process is to open the town meeting warrant. So I do need a motion for that. I'll make a motion to open the town meeting warrant to um, open on, what was the date? Uh, today. Today. Well, or tomorrow morning, but tomorrow yeah. Tomorrow morning <laughs> and close on the 20... A April 17th. April 17th. I have a motion by Howard. Do I have a second? Second. Second by John. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you. Item I. Um, in front of us, we do have um, from the Chief of the Forest Wardens, uh, Chief Ouellette, um, a request for the Town of Adams to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 48, Section 59A, um, authorizing the Adams Forest Wardens Department to provide uh, mutual aid. Is there anything else to add to this? They already provide mutual aid. They've been to North Adams. They've been to other okay. communities. Forest Wardens have uh, always done that. They're just doing some housekeeping, and this provision needs to be uh, adopted. I'll make a motion to authorize the Adams Forest Warden Department to provide mutual aid. Okay. I have a motion by Howard. Second. Second by John. Any discussion? Yes, just quickly. Um, yesterday at our uh, budget meetings, um, this came up. There will be uh, under town insurance. They always have been. Okay, they always have been. So what did we, I mean, I just can't remember, what did we do at the budget meeting when it came to the Forest Wardens? There was something that we spoke about. Last night? Yeah. It's called the McNamara Law. Okay. That covers all of our volunteers, and yeah. that's the law that would cover them okay. if they get hurt either in town or, I'll or outside. Away. Yep, and that's that last paragraph that you see. Yep. That's what it's referring to. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That is unanimous. And uh, that will have to be signed by everybody. Yeah, we have a few signature items this evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and item J, uh, in our meeting materials, we do have an invitation from the American Legion um, to participate in the Memorial Day Parade. Um, it states, good day. We would like to invite the Adams Board of Selectmen to participate in our annual Memorial Day Parade. The parade is scheduled for May 27th, 2024, with a start time of 10 a.m., starting from the Adams Memorial Building and ending at the Maple Street Cemetery. The route would be the same as in previous years. I look forward to hearing from you. Kindest regards, Mark Sabastino, American Legion Post 160. So there's no action to take, just um, an announcement about the upcoming parade and an invitation to all members of the board um, to participate. And we thank the Legion for their work on that event and for sending over an invitation. All right, that um, concludes new business. Um, before we adjourn, I do want to just uh, mention our next regular meeting is April 17th at 6 p.m. Um, however, we do have a budget workshop scheduled for tomorrow. Um, the budget workshop is scheduled to be held in the annex of the library. However, um, please watch the website. Um, and for board members, please look at your email tomorrow, depending on what Mother Nature brings us. Um, overnight and into the morning may determine if we need to um, reschedule that workshop. It is already posted for Monday um, in the event that we do need to postpone. So um, please put Monday on your calendar as a possible date, but we do hope for hope to go forward with our budget workshop tomorrow. With all of that said, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much.